pounds this Caribbean shoreline of what Christopher Columbus dubbed El Puerto Rico, the rich port, when he discovered it on his second voyage westward in 1493. For centuries, ships of the seven seas have crossed the bar under the ramparts of El Moro Fortress, mightiest of Puerto Rico's many historic ports. Guardians of this one-time Spanish-ruled island, which was ceded to the United States of America at the close of the Spanish-American War in 1898. Puerto Rico is predominantly Roman Catholic in its religion, and the old cathedrals retain much of the atmosphere and culture that is Spanish. Streets in San Juan are colorful, old world in name and character. But this section has overflowed to nearby Santurce, which reflects the modern trend at every turn, yet retains some customs of yesteryear. Notably, the insular government-controlled lottery. With its public ticket sales and lucky winner announcements each Sunday. To the age-old sport of cockfighting, introduced by the Spaniards in the 16th century, is also government-supervised and still ranks next to baseball as top sport for native Puerto Ricans. The Commonwealth Housing Authority has built over 5,000 low-cost home units and largely eliminated the ill-famed El Fanguito slums. Added facility, these huge low-rent apartment buildings. Yes, Puerto Rico has come a long way in a relatively short time and its people are proud of their ability to achieve, in part, a successful economic pattern and a happy way of life. Proud, too, of the University of Puerto Rico and its affiliated schools of learning with a total enrollment of many thousands. And they are co-educational. A cultural note, the Insular Government Conservatory of Music the School of Tropical Medicine, with its timely research, helps keep the island amazingly free of inherent tropical diseases. Men of Medicine, the Puerto Rico Medical Association, lists over 1,200 doctors and 3,500 trained nurses. Typical of the island's 133 hospitals is the municipal with its well-staffed clinic. And nearby Presbyterian Hospital serves its share of Puerto Rico's two and a quarter million citizens. 24 hours each day. Radio and television. And importantly, freedom of the press. News is gathered intelligently and impartially reported. Ultra-modern printing equipment and presses provide round-the-clock editions in both Spanish and English. Three and one half days sea cruise time from New York, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico imports yearly over $375 million worth of U.S. mainland goods. One of our best customers. Essential coal for the island's 35 sugar mills and specialized industries. Here, more than 15 domestic and foreign steamship companies maintain regular sailings to Western Hemisphere and European ports. Industry-wise, investments in plants and machinery have passed the 115 million mark, and annual salaries for workers directly employed total more than 22 million. Industrial incentives, including 10-year tax exemption and other tax freedoms, have attracted some 325 plants to the Commonwealth since 1948, and created jobs for 50,000 Puerto Ricans. Operation Bootstrap moves forward, and today, Puerto Rico is an integral part of the American economic system, a new frontier for business enterprise. The seat of government of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico is located in the capital on Ponce de Leon in San Juan. The Legislative Assembly consists of the Senate and the House of Representatives with originally 27 senators and 51 representatives elected by the people. In these days of international strain, popular, twice-elected native governor Munoz Marin 
aware of the agitations of a small minority of nationalistic fanatics and malcontents, administers the affairs of the Commonwealth with clear vision and the loyal support of a stable and well-trained officialdom. But at this stage, neither independence nor statehood will meet the realities of Puerto Rico's economic position. Let us first achieve, then maintain a balanced budget, says Governor Maureen. Six short air hours from New York City, Puerto Rico is the aerial crossroads of the Americas, and the newer air terminal at Isla Verde will accommodate the largest commercial planes, provide top facilities for world passenger and cargo travel. Ramey Air Force Base at Aquadilla, with its two-mile runways, is a member of the Strategic Air Command, an all-important link in our outer defense pattern. Here, reconnaissance bombers and other craft are serviced by skilled maintenance crews. Many veterans of World War II and Korea are on the airman roster at Ramey. The air refuel crew runs through an inspection. Vital lifeline of our aerial strength is this little known activity, the essential transfer of fuel while in flight. A miracle of planned timing. An operation air-sea rescue is simulated. And this all-purpose helicopter takes to the air to team up with the faster SA-10 amphibian, which speedily locates and plots the position of the stranded men who flare signal from their distress raft. The SA-10 radios their area location to the helicopter. And the rescue is accomplished. All craft return to the base. The SA-10 with a jet assist takeoff. Back at the base, the Air Force police squad puts on a manual of arms precision drill. Under the direction of veteran Sergeant Ken Nealon. At Cabo Rojo, near Mayaguez, on the southwestern tip of the 100-mile island, are the fabulous salt fields of Puerto Rico. Tons of Caribbean seawater, tide-controlled, are sluiced to huge foot-deep pools, following the same formula the Spaniards established over a hundred years ago. When most of the water has evaporated, the salt is moved to higher ground and complete dehydration results in a yield of some 10,000 tons per year of clear crystal salt. The entire production is consumed within Puerto Rico. Salt from the sea, a harvest of mother nature. Sugar cane grows everywhere. It is the island's number one business, a million and a half tons a year, more than $130 million in export trade. Sugar cane growers are paid according to the sugar content of their cane, and it rates high. Cane is ground and assayed within 24 hours at these sugar mills, or centrales, where production is on a non-stop basis 190 days each year. Pineapple plantations dot the island, generally between prehistoric mountain peaks where the soil is specially treated with fertilizer, germ killer, and nutrition. It's Puerto Rico's third largest crop and realizes more than $2 million yearly for the growers. New methods of planting and cultivation of the coffee bush mean improved crops. These blossoms indicate the superior strains recently introduced, assure a richer blend of coffee much in export demand. The healthy bean is picked in time-honored fashion by Hibaro families, and the restoration crop program undertaken by the Insular Department of Agriculture has paid off in a good coffee year. A rich harvest spells work for some 50,000 natives. A 30 million pound crop with enough coffee for Puerto Rico's own needs, plus 5 million pounds for export. In a coconut grove, you'd naturally gather coconuts. And the visitor to the island is greeted with a traditional hospitality drink, Bienvenida. Tourist business to Puerto Rico passed the $15 million mark last year. Accommodations immediately available. The streamlined luxury hotels with those beside the sea pools. Or your own private furnished apartment. Days of sunshine fanned by the caressing trade winds make for air-conditioned relaxation the year round. 
Yes, for the air at 80 degrees and the water 75, you can't miss. Sports? Surely. Volleyball or... Well, you call it, they have it. And tennis is producing some likely local talent. On our way up to the picturesque El Yunque Mountain Resort, we pass the village of Hayuya, scene of the recent ill-fated nationalistic uprising by the insurgents. This lookout atop a mountain peak, a relic of Spanish rule. Then the Caribbean National Forest, literally in the clouds. A paradise of lush tropical foliage where orchids grow wild and ferns are tree size. The view from El Yunque is the most famous on the island. And in the distance, equally famous Luquillo Beach. Hasta la vista, and we'll be seeing you in Puerto Rico, USA.